What's going on, hockey fans? It is Power Rankings Week, and we had a week off to kind of recoup, regenerate, and rebuild after a lot of travel. And we are ready to bring the power this week. Who is the number one team in the Elite? Who is the number one team in the Premier? And who won the Holiday Follow Challenge? All of it on the biggest episode of the year. Well, the first one, I guess. Hockey fans, this is going to be a long one. We got a lot to dig through, so let's get right into it. Before we start, though, I'd be remiss if I didn't look to my left and introduce into the show my left hand man, Mike Consigliere, a man who got everything he wanted and more for the holiday season. It is Lucas Jones. Lucas, you ready for this one? Oh, I am excited. We were able to spend some time to really dig into this one, and we needed the extra time because a lot of things happened in December, as it tends to do in the USPHL. Yep. Flipped a few things on its head, but you'll have to wait and see what got flipped, what got moved, and I think we're starting with the Elite. We're starting with the Elite, and this month was called the Big Movers Month. That's what I'm calling this one. There was a lot of changes in both the Elite and Premier. Stick around, Holiday Follow Challenge, folks. We'll get to you a little later on this one. At number 10, we start there, and this is a team that had a real, real rough month of December. 2-6-0, 3-7-0 in their last 10. A team that right now is almost in that 50-50 goals against differential here. The Florida Eels at 17-12-1-1, they fall into this number 10 spot. Yeah, this is an Eels team right now that's being carried into the 10th spot, essentially on the back of their record. You know, they, they had a rough December. They went 3-7 and seven on the month. They, they lost a lot of ground in this elite division. They ran into some roadblocks, Dan. They ran into a few injury roadblocks. They ran into a few of tough teams that were hot when they played them. You know, they did all right in the Florida Showcase. I think they're one of those teams that definitely could use the time off. That's exactly right. I mean, they are also one of the only organizations to have a team in both top tens, the elite and premier, in every single month for the last two years. We'll see if they do it again. Their two wins were against the Atlanta Mad Hatters. They split with them in the month of December. Look at how tough this schedule was. The Whalers, the Rush, the Colonials, and the Junior Canes all got the wins against them. Tough month schedule-wise for the Eels. I think we could see them bounce back right away at the Winter Showcase. At number nine, this was an argument right here. Yes. I said the Boston Bandits. Lucas said the Atlanta Mad Hatters. I won the argument battle this go-around, but I think that the Winter Showcase is going to have a lot to say about whether this Bandits team stays in the nine spot. Yeah, and, and just, just to kind of show you guys where I was at with this one, the Atlanta Mad Hatters look good in person. They look like a complete team. The building blocks are all really, really starting to find their way in there. And they went 3-5-2 they went and two in their last 10 games, so the record's not quite there. But I think this is a team that's on the improvement. They're getting better. They split. With, they've split the season series so far with the Florida Eels, which I think would have slotted them higher. The Boston Bandits are potentially a stronger team, but they only played two games in December. Yeah. And I think for me, that was that was where I, where I decided that Mad Hatter should have been a number nine. But something that's interesting about the Bandits, Dan, because at the Winter Showcase, the Boston Bandits are about to run into <laughs> a wall. Yeah. There is a storm front, and it is coming up from the south. You've got games against... The Colonials, one of the hottest teams in the USPHL right now, trying to overcome a slow start. Then the Charlotte Rush and the Tampa Bay Juniors on the same day. Yeah, and you bounce back. That's a real quick turnaround. The late night prime time start against the Colonials. Then you're up bright and early tea time with the Charlotte Rush. I mean, that is going to be a difficult run through for them. My thing is, they're one of their two losses in the month was against the Cyclones team that very tough to beat right there. I think strength of schedule helps them there playing them. The Aviators lost. That's one. The Aviators, always a difficult matchup at both the Elite and Premier level. Let's move to number eight. This one was agreed upon on both ends. The Jersey Hitmen. This is a team that's 2-1 and one against the Bandits this year. They were 2-1 and one in the month of December, and guess what? Two of those wins came against the Junior Bruins. They only lost to a very tough picks team too well. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the Jersey Hitmen right now, I think they're very comfortably at 8, a team that, again, you know, slowly but surely, they're picking up those wins, 5-3-2 and two in the last 10 games, so they're they're getting there, and I wouldn't be surprised if after January, they might move up a spot or two. Yeah, and this is a team that has depth. I wouldn't want to play them come playoff time. When you get to the Nationals, I mean, you want to find those right matchups, and this is a team that's going to be always a kind of a difficult matchup. It's an uncomfortable night out there on the ice, or morning out there on the ice, when you play this Jersey Hitmen side at the elite level. Watch out for the Hitmen making a move up the standings here. To number seven, we go to a team that we have come to know and love, and this is the Carolina Junior Canes. They've hit the 20-win mark on the year here in the month of December. They were two, they were sorry, two, three, oh, and one though. A, a slow start to the month for them. Their only wins against the Blades and Eels. They lost twice to the Rush, once to Atlanta. They lost to the Tampa Bay Juniors in a shootout, so that one doesn't even count. No, I mean that doesn't, doesn't even happen. It's it's just magic loss. But the Carolina Junior Canes here. 6 3 0 1 in their last 10. So the December wasn't great, but in their last 10, they're still there. I think they come out of the breaks. I, I would watch out for them to make a move. I'd expect them in the top five by the time we get to the end of January. Yeah, you know, another team that's that's kind of been, been tough in the personnel department. One of the things that's interesting about having an elite and a premier team is that even if the elite team's healthy, if the premier team is not, those call-ups are coming from your squad. Yeah. So so it's a it's an organization that that's why it exists. You want to have the call-ups, you want to have the movement. But you know, six three oh and one in their last ten kind of hides the fact that they didn't have a great December. But I think again, you hit that two-week break, you come back in December or you come back in January, and I think they'll be healthy and rested and prime for a really good January. And here's what you have to understand about this elite division, right? There's so much talent on the top end of these squads, and there's so much depth on a lot of these teams, especially the ones that make our top ten that they're able to feed the Premier system, which is the point of this whole setup, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's that feed from Elite to Premier, like Lucas said. Injuries make a big difference mid-season. When you start getting towards that holiday break, injuries start to rear their ugly head. I am telling you right now, the quarter poles of the season, you can, you can chalk it up on a list, I'll mention it again, but who are you when you get to the Winter Showcase will play a big role, and a lot of these teams are going to look a lot different come January, this, or come tomorrow, I guess, at the uh, the Big Time Showcase, tonight at the Big Time Showcase. Let's move to number six. This one, we bounced all around. Lucas had these guys as high as four. I had these guys in the sixth spot. They come back to the sixth spot here. The Springfield Picks, who went 4-3-0 in the month of December. They sit at number six right now, 7-3-0 in their last ten. A hundred goals for whenever you hit that triple-digit number in the first half of the season, you're in good shape. Yeah, this is a team that has an extremely potent offense. They've got good goaltending. Uh, you know, they've had some some good defensive plays so far this season. If you go back and watch the tape, they're just such a complete team, and, yeah. and they really create problems when they run into teams. They've been a little inconsistent in games where you quote unquote should be winning or should be on top for a lot of the games. I think that might be little cause for concern, but but I don't think I don't think they they should be any lower than six, and and I think that four to six range. Bouncing around is a very comfortable spot for them. Yeah, they split with the Boston Junior Bruins. They lost two to the Cyclones again. Tough team in the Cyclones. Haven't heard their names called yet. We'll see where they slot in. Let's go to a team at number five who we have talked about all year. No matter what the record has said, at times this year that record has not been pretty. It has not been spotless. There has been dust all over the living room on this team. They lost a lot of points. They lost a lot of goals. They lost a lot of speed. And they have slowly started, you know what, the Tampa Bay Juniors are number five. This team creates speed. These guys go there and they take it to another level. You want to talk about one of the top teams, one of the top organizations in player development. These guys develop players and you're seeing it yet again. They come out in December, they host the Florida Showcase, and they were real good. Really fun to watch. Tampa Bay at number five. And I'm so happy to be able to put Tampa Bay at five. This is a team that I've been locked in on since last year. Did an interview with Coach Garrett Strote in the offseason talking about the team. And from the beginning of this season, Dan, all we've ever said about Tampa Bay, when they find it, watch out. Yep. Because it's a team that has so much skill. They have so much depth. The system is already in place. And when the system survives year after year, the players find it. They get better. They finally start to gel. And they're looking real scary. They are. And really... Their only two losses were against teams we haven't named yet. So we jump to the next team, one of those two that beat them, at number four, a team that is slowly matriculating back at both levels. A team that got off to a slow start, dealt with the injury bug, dealt with some new faces, figuring it out, and all of a sudden, 
Lucas is uh, his arch nemesis. The Hampton Roads Whalers sit at number four in the elite. This is a team that went 4-2-0 in the month. They split with the Generals, they beat Tampa, they beat the Eels, they beat the Colonials, and one of their only other losses, other than that Generals loss, to a Rush team who, you haven't heard the name of them yet either. Yeah, Hampton Roads is alright. Oh, I'm just don't joking. even, don't you dare. I'm just joking. Don't you dare go after the boys this from Hampton Roads. It's not a big deal. has been so impressive, especially because when, I, when they started the season down at that uh, USPHL Southeast Showcase, Yes. They were down to, I think, three defensemen, three healthy defensemen. Three, and they, they took an injury in that showcase. They had yes. two in their final matchup. So they are, they are, they're getting back from injuries. They're getting back into the swing of things. And if, you've, if you watch these power rankings, you see them one spot, two spots, one spot, and now they're here at four, and they're only looking up. This Hampton Roads team is not looking to slide back anymore. I just I think that they found it, and this is one of those situations. I, I'll equate it to football for those fans at home right now with the college playoffs going on. A team like Clemson this year who just kind of found it at the right time. And, you know, they, they just win this Hampton Roads Whalers team. They just win, and they keep themselves involved. And even when they're losing games, they're within it. They're competitive. And this is a sign that... Come playoff time, you don't want to see. And we move on. We talk about playoff time. This is a team that's always in it. At number three, a team that Lucas had at number one. Lucas had these guys at number one. Tell me why, Lucas, you thought the Charlotte Rush at number three should have been at number one. I just think they're currently the scariest team in the elite. I think they're a team that nobody wants to play. December, they haven't lost. Eight, two, and oh in their last ten. With those six straight wins... You were talking about massive goal differentials in some cases there, Dan, and, and they're a team that's already up to 125 goals scored wow. in the first half of the season. I just think that if you talk about the record, you talk about the skill, and you talk about the buzz, because whenever you mention the Charlotte Rush, every coach goes, oof, I yeah. don't want to play them. They're tough to play against, and I will tell you the biggest breaking news we got when we were down in Florida was a bench interview with Coach Trevor Jewell. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned Christian Robel, who I will say his name every day for the rest of time. Coaches at home, if you've not checked out Christian Robel yet on the ice, get to it. This guy is next level. This guy is a big time talent. He will slot it immediately. This is the game changer with this rush, con uh, this rush team, this rush organization. If he plays top line for the elite at the forward position, I think they're a national champion. I think they're the team to beat. I think that I think they run through it. If he goes up and he slots in that third, fourth line with the premier side, I think they are the national champion. And Coach Trevor Jewell said he would see Christian Robel slotting more into this elite side. Now, obviously, injuries can change that. Right. Promotions can change that. Movement can change that. So you know you never can you never can fully quote a quote in December about playoff time. But if Christian Robel stays with this elite side, I agree they're number one. But right now I keep him at number three just because you never know. You never know. And I think I think that's a good place to put them, give them a little motivation to get up there because the last two teams we've got are no slouches. That's right. And at number two, a team Lucas didn't believe in. Didn't believe in them, boys. Uh. Didn't believe in you. But guess who always believes in you, boys? 6-0-0 in December. Lucas talks up this Charlotte Rush 6-0 December. Well, then how do you forget about this 6-0 December? How about the Northern Cyclones? Clone City, baby. 22-2-1-1 going into the break. This team 9-0-1-0 in their last 10. That only loss was a tough one to the Colonials that we were on the call for. That was just one of those defensive mashups where the goaltender stood on his head. Sometimes you just can't find the back of the net. Water's world out there. This is the Northern Cyclones team that, that beat the Rockets, beat the Bandits, beat the Bruins, beat the Picks twice, beat the Aviators. You can't beat someone who's not on your schedule. You can only beat who is put on the plate in front of you. You can't beat teams you're not scheduled against. And for the record, apparently not believing in a team is equating to putting them at third instead of second place. <laughs> Dan throwing me under the bus on that one. I mean, look, this Northern Cyclones team is tough to play. The reason I put them in third is because the, the strength of schedule for the Charlotte Rush, you could make the argument, is a little bit better. But, Dan, you made some good points. I am fine with putting Northern at second because with the exception of that loss to the Colonials, I mean, they've just been incredible. Well, the Rush strength of the schedule is better. We can agree on that. But the Cyclones did beat the Rush head-to-head 3-0. -head when they've had the opportunities to showcase themselves, they have done so, and they will look to do so again at the Winter Showcase this weekend. At number one, yet again, 
This elite team, I mean, we made the mistake at the start of the year of putting them outside of it, and they have reared back into this one. They have fired back in. They are firing in all cylinders. they got a tough schedule coming up here at the Winter Showcase, and it is the Richmond Generals yet again. This team, a team that's only got four losses, three of those coming to regulation, 124 goals for, and only 48 against. Richmond's been incredible. They've, yep. been, they've been unstoppable. They've been incredible. To borrow one of your phrases, they've been stupendous. They've been every single superlative you can think of, but now add that they're going to be tested. Yep. And that's because at the Winter Showcase, they have a Friday game at 4 p.m. against the Northern Cyclones. So they'll be at 8.50 against the Eels, and they'll have to come back to play their second game of the day against Northern, which could have huge January power rankings implications. That is right. Friday, January 3rd, a 1v2 matchup. One of the first times we've ever had this directly coming out of a power rankings. Tomorrow afternoon, Hockey TV, you better tune in. We unfortunately won't be on the broadcast because Dan Kay's got a day job. He's got to get out of it and get it, drive up there and do all our things on the weekend. But the Northern Cyclones, the number two team overall in our elite power rankings, take on the number one Richmond Generals in a must-see matchup. You better tune in. That will be game-changing, world-changing. Exactly, and, and that is actually our Dan K Show must-see matchup of the week. So you can go to dankshow.com. You can read our preview, our breakdown, what we think the X's and O's are going to be like. You'll never see us pick a winner on those articles because we are just as excited to watch the game as you are. We try to give you a little insight on what's going to happen, so head to dankshow.com and read that article now. Your top 10, number one, the Richmond Generals, number two, the Northern Cyclones, number three, the Rush, number four, the Hampton Roads Whalers, number five, our boys, the Tampa Bay Juniors, number six, we pick the picks, number seven, the Carolina Junior Canes, so sweet, number eight, the Jersey Hitmen, number nine, the Boston Bandits, steal that spot, and at number 10, slithering into the back end there is number 10, the Florida Eels, that Eels team, Got to be careful for that Atlanta Manhattan squad there. We are going to be back with more now. The premier power rankings are next. Howdy Holiday Follow Challenge participants. I know you've been waiting a long time and voting for over a month for this awesome experience, this awesome opportunity. And it is time to make the announcement. And what better way to make the announcement than a surprise that we don't even know. Producer Lena has done all the vote tallying and we have no clue who was within these unwrapped gifts. We will be unwrapping them in a second. Lucas, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I am ready. Lucas, I believe you have the second place team. Remember, two teams win this year. In second place, Lucas, unwrap our second place holiday follow challenge winner. And our second place winner is the Richmond Generals. The Richmond Generals for the second year in a row have found themselves holiday follow challenge victorious. Congratulations to the folks out there. Over 3,900 votes have been tallied. The Richmond Generals in second place. That leaves me with number one. The Mavericks were up there. The Moose were up there. The River Kings were up there. Who will it be? Let's unwrap it now. So, suspend. Lucas. Oh boy. Get your frequent flyer miles ready, buddy, because we're going to the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings. First place, the champions of the Holiday Follow Challenge, the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings, the Generals, the River Kings. Vic Victorious in this one, and we are going to be visiting. We're going to have on site content, a Dan K show takeover by each squad when we show up. And Lucas, I've got the dates that we're showing up the both, te both teams because we planned it out and made sure we were ready for anybody. January 11th, Capital Ale House Night with the Richmond Generals. The Dan K show will be on attendance, as they say, in attendance there. We'll be doing the Elite and Premier broadcasts on Hockey TV at 4.30 and 7.30 Eastern Time Start, and we'll have a bunch of fun t content with our boys down in Richmond. That's right, and then when we get to go to Wisconsin, which we are very excited about because they've got the gate, they've got the equipment, they've got the ambiance that Dan K. Show loves so much, we'll be heading up there that first weekend in February to go watch them take on the ever-challenging Hudson Havoc. That's going to be a good one. February 1st, the Dan K. Show takes over the Rapids, man. We're going up to the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings Saturday night, February 1st. Havoc v. River Kings. That could be a matchup for first place in the division on that night. That is going to be a battle royale. We cannot wait. The River Kings and the Richmond Generals, congratulations on your holiday follow challenge win. Thank you all for voting. Guys, literally brings a tear to my eye every holiday season when we see just how much love we get. With the big announcement of the holiday follow challenge winners behind us, 
Let's get in, down and dirty, into the Premier Power Rankings, baby. This is a big one. There was a ton of movement. You want to talk about movement month? This was the biggest movement month of the year, Lucas. And we start, talk about how difficult it was to pick a top 10. We had 19 teams we could have put in this top 10. We had to boil it down. We couldn't get it to 10. So we have 11. We have a tie for 10th. A tie for 10th. And this is volume two of the Dan K, the Lucas Jones, Utica Junior Comets battle. Because tied at 10th, we've got the Skipjacks Hockey Club and the Utica Junior Comets. That's the 10th spot. Yeah, I mean, I... I... I fought for Utica on this one. I'm always fighting for Utica. I will agree that the Skipjacks are moving up in the world. They're making things going. But look, Utica in December won one and one, right? So they only played three games. They had, by that stretch, a rough December uh, by going one, one, and one. But they have just been so incredible. And if we're going to make the argument that having a rough, short game schedule in December doesn't matter so much, I would like to present you with Exhibit B, which is the Utica Junior Comets, a short schedule in December, not enough games to really make a difference, so we have to go back to their record beforehand. 132 goals for, they deserve top 10. I look at the other side of things, and I see a Skip Jacks hockey club team that in the month of December went 7-1-0. and oh. They were making hay in December. They also went 3-1 and one against top 10 teams from our previous month's power rankings, and guess what? Those wins knocked both of those teams outside the top 10. When you can knock teams out of the top 10, guess what? There's a spot open for you, and I think the Skipjacks come in and take that spot. They're tied for 10th year, 7-1-0 in the month. They swept Pitt. They swept Connecticut. They swept Pal. They split with the Philadelphia Hockey Club. They've got 104 goals for. The defense has showed up of late, and I think that this team, along with the team that sits at number 9, the New Jersey Rockets, will be the two representatives out of that Mid-Atlantic Division. Yeah, I mean, and, and for that 10th spot, as we do always, we'll, we'll sort of let hockey decide, right? We'll let the teams figure it out for themselves. But one team that is starting to figure out, Dan, is that New Jersey Rockets squad. Yep. They didn't lose in December. They had five wins in a row, 9-1-0 and in their last 10, 156 goals for this is a team that is living up to their namesake. Every time we've talked about the Rockets in the past, this is a downhill skating offense first squad. They create defense by having way too much offense and being overwhelming. And the Rockets are getting it together. They are 23-5-0 on the season. They're playing good squads. They have good outcomes. I love what is coming out of New Jersey right now. And this was Mid-Atlantic month. You want to name it something. There's yeah. another team sitting there that was 7-2-0-1 in their last 10 and only got two games under their belt in the month of December, the Philadelphia Hockey Club, that they fall out of the top ten here just because of a split with the Skipjacks team who we put in. This Mid-Atlantic division is up for grabs right now. And also don't forget a New York Aviators side who at the premier level no one wants to deal with offensively. There were four teams in this Mid-Atlantic. This division has gone from kind of a snoozer early in the year where you felt like this might be a slow start for the division, maybe a little bit of a down year for some of these teams that are rebuilding it back up. But guess what? Rebuilds in the Mid-Atlantic last about seven seconds because any of these teams could win a title this year. There are four teams right now that have absolutely floored us with their ability. Rockets, Skipjacks, Philadelphia Hockey Club, and those Aviators do not sleep on the speedy Aviators back there. But the Rockets get the nine spot. They've only got five losses on the year. Really, really stellar work coming out of Bridgewater there. Let's go to number eight. And this... Talk about shoots and ladders. Dan Kay's least favorite game as a kid. I hated those shoots. I hated landing on those shoots. And the Islanders Hockey Club, they headed down to Florida. And, you know, they, they took a bit of a trip south here in the standings as well. An 0-4 weekend there. Kind of hit the branches on the tree on the way down on a very tough and testing weekend in Tampa. Yeah, they, they sort of fell off the mountaintop there. And unfortunately, when you're on top, the only way to go is down. And mm -hmm. you, you go down to this Florida trip, and we talked to, you know, Coach Tim K, and we said, you know, what do you want? He's like, I want my boys to be challenged. Yep. Well, they were. And, you know, after, after a couple of losses, we talked to him again, and we said, you know, what are you thinking right now? And he goes, you know what? I, I think that the adversity is a good thing. And we all agreed, better to have it happen here than towards the end of the season. So if anything, yep. again... I think this might make IHC a more scary team because they're, you can be sure that they're going to go look at that tape and be pointing out everything that went wrong Tortorella style and getting back on the ice an even better squad. Let's go to Dan Kay's chat with the boys here. And the Dan Kay chat with the boys at the Islanders Hockey Club. Gentlemen, you know what? 
you ain't going to go undefeated throughout an entire hockey season at this level. It's, I mean, maybe, but it is almost impossible. You went in there and you played what was the toughest showcase schedule in one weekend that any team outside of the Metro Jets has played thus far. You took on three potential top 10 teams and a Colonials team that is on the uptick right now, really making it work, really clicking on all cylinders under Coach Bishop. And you, you wore one. You wore one. You took three, you took four L's. Boys, you take the break. You get that winter showcase vibe getting ready. You keep yourself working. You keep at it. You keep hammering away. Keep sawing that wood. And guess what? You got a chance here at the winter showcase to put up a four spot here, an eight pointer, an eight point weekend, and make a statement and say, This is ours for the taking. We're coming back. Nationals times. Boys beware, Islanders Hockey Club are coming back at you. Let's go to number seven, a team that beat IHC this last uh, showcase weekend in Tampa. A team that went 5-2-0 in the month but had two tough losses to the Rush and Whalers where they were unable to score a goal, the Florida Eels. Yeah, this is a Florida Eels squad that maintains that, that impressive streak of having both their teams in the top ten, you know, continuing here in the month of December. This is a, a, a team that has a big lead in their division right now. They've got a lot of talent. But again, the story is injuries and how they come yep. back from those injuries and how they come back from having these guys is important. But talking again to coaches and especially to Frank Scarpacci, he's like, look, my boys are resilient. Yeah. I have absolute confidence in every single one of them. He makes sure that they are okay before they get back out there on the ice. He has no problem telling them to get extra rest. That's exactly right. And this is Neil's team that, you know, sometimes it just, when they fall behind early, if you get ahead of them early and you're a team like the Rush or the Whalers or the Islanders Hockey Club and you do get that early lead, sometimes the boys kind of get into that 5v1 that hockey rather mm -hmm. than that 5v5. And it starts to become a skill show. And that's where teams that are really good, these top premier squads, are going to lean back on you. And you're going to put your goalie up against it a bit there. This is a situation where you go back to the drawing board during this break. You figure it out. But yet again, the Eels find themselves with two teams in the top ten of the Premier League. That is an amazing accomplishment month in and month out. Yeah, it's incredible. And we'll see if they're able to recover from some of these injuries and make a push in the late season. Let's talk about a push here. Let's go to the Richmond Generals at number six. And this is a team Lucas had real high up in his standings. I had him back here in this sixth spot right now because... I do think that they're the third team in the Southeast, which is not going to make me any friends when I go to Richmond. But boys, I say it for this reason. I love the hashtag Dan K bump. I like to bump the team there. Sometimes you kind of wake the boys up. Guess what? It's time to respond to this number six spot here, Richmond Gens. You just saw Matt Hickory Dickory Dockerty not only putting goals in the back of the net, but the kid that's West Philadelphia born and raised, it's going to be Stevenson where he spends the next four years of his days. Congrats to Matt Daugherty. Congrats to the Richmond Generals. And this is a team that is 6-3-1-0 in their last 10. Their losses came to the Juniors in a split with the Hampton Roads Whalers in the month of December. They got a Whalers win under their belt. Colonials, Blades, and Atlanta. A good team in, in Richmond. Yeah, I mean, Richmond in December, kind of an up-and-down month. You know, again, you, you have that split with Hampton Roads, which is always tough. But, I mean... December is kind of a month where some teams take a little bit of a more 500 approach to hockey. You've got yeah. the holiday season involved there. You've got two showcases for some teams, one showcase for other teams, lots of games. So, you know, I think at this point in the season, a 4-2 and two December, not bad at all. Definitely keeps Richmond around that middle level. Here is where we will get some frustration from the Richmond fans. Richmond beat our number five team head-to-head -head in the Islanders Hockey Club Showcase, the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings moved to the number five spot. And this is a River Kings team, though, that when they faced Richmond, lost by a goal there, lost in a close one, they were on their fourth game in three days. Richmond was just getting their weekend underway. Not often do you see that type of matchup there. That was a tired River Kings team. I also blame the fact that I gave the pregame speech. The Dan K, I, I guess I, I didn't help you guys out there. I got, you, I got you guys too tired out by pumping you up too much before the game. But I put this River Kings team at number five. Lucas, I think we both agree on this one. Yeah, I mean, with this River Kings squad, they can play all types of teams, right? You can play the Mullets that you have wins against two wins against the Mullets that have a phenomenal goaltender and Botstead yep. out there. You play this Ducks team that is so talented, their ability to move the puck around, the offensive juggernaut of the Spacemen, the physical juggernaut of Lansing. You know, and this complete Detroit Fighting Irish squad. Their only loss, a shootout loss to Metro, which we all know doesn't count, so we wipe that slate clean. <laughs> uh, I think, I, and what I'm always impressed with is 
We've only ever seen Wisconsin in their fourth game. Yep. And they are still so physical, so committed to the system's play, so potent offensively. You get guys out there who are skating around like madmen, yep. right? You've, you've, got, you've got their top line, which is just absolutely incredible. You've got Mr. Stevenson out there on the right wing, who is one of the fastest skaters that I've ever seen. Kids of beauty. And, you know, I, it almost looks like they're ready to put up seven, eight goals a game. So John Hamm was a good skater? You said they're skating like Mad Men. I didn't get that one. I didn't know he was a good skater. John Hamm, congrats on your great hockey career and acting career. Guy does it all. Can't leave him alone for more than a week, otherwise he just resorts to puns. He's a ham of all trades. I'm going to open up a restaurant with Michael Buble and John Hamm, call it Ham and Bubbly. Number four in the top ten. This team was outside the top ten. Outside of the top ten. Lucas was dancing. He was celebrating. He was shouting from the mountaintops. He was with his yodeling club out in the Swiss Alps. Yodeling away, saying, Hampton Roads is out. But guess what? They're right back in. Not a big deal. The Hampton Roads Whalers are number four in our premier top ten. Yeah, they're, they're all right. <laughs> I joke again, folks. Dan makes it sound like I hate this Hampton Roads team, and I truly, truly do not. Get but him, I guys. think it's tradition now that the boys have told me, they said, look, we don't want your vote. Because every time you pick us, the one, or the one time I picked them, they lost. So I don't pick Hampton Roads anymore, but they are certainly fighting, scraping and clawing win after win after goal after goal to get themselves back into the top ten. You want to talk tenacity? You want to talk a never-give-up attitude? Yeah. This is that team. Lucas. Lucas. Last year, Lucas reigned throughout the rafters of Lawler Arena as the Hampton Roads Whalers closed out their national title run for the second consecutive year. I expect that Lucas chant to rear its ugly head again. Let's go to number three, a team that faced Hampton Roads in the championship last year, and they look right back ready to go after it again. The Metro Jets. This is a Metro Jets team with 174. Five goals for they score they just scored right now just talking about them they've scored another goal and then you look in net and they got Augustine alongside the Mac Daddy the Mac Man Big Mac side of fries Macus Turner the game Turner between the pipes they've only allowed 52 goals they scored 175 they went seven to one in December the only loss a 1-0 close call against the Hudson Havoc team who we haven't said their names yet. And you look at this, they beat Lansing, Toledo, the Moose, the River Kings in a shootout, and the Blue Ox, all difficult teams to deal with. This Metro Jets team is real. They are for real. They are tough. They are a tough squad to have to go up against. They are physical. They are skilled. They can meet you at the blue line. And the importance of the goaltending duo, we always talk about, especially as you get closer to playoff time, having two goaltenders is so, so important. Both of those guys are extremely skilled. But, Dan, I think the one thing for Metro, the goal scoring is a little much. I think, you know, it's, <laughs> no. it's a little excessive, guys. I, I know, Keep going. I know I'm, an off, I'm a defensive kind of guy, so I might be biased. But, you know, maybe consider uh, not scoring seven goals a game. These guys are good. Gosh darn good. The Metro Jets watch out for this Jet side of the Great Lakes Division. We go to number two. For the first time. In Dan K. Show Power Rankings history, we have put a Midwest West team at the top of the Midwest West Power Rankings, and they have not lost. They went undefeated, never lost. They have won 18 of their last 19 games. They were 7-0 in December. They went into a big-time showcase and ended up with 11 straight Ws. They beat the Vipers, the Blue Ox, the Cougars, the Jets, MJDP Pittsburgh. That means in this month, they beat two, count them two, the Midwest East number one and the Great Lakes number one. They also beat the number two in their own event. This is a really, really good Hudson Havoc team. And every single person we talked to about the Hudson Havoc at the USPHL Chicago Showcase said depth, depth. This team just keeps firing at you. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that can absolutely kill you in so many different ways. I mean, their, their squad has the ability to sort of morph. You know, they can come out in the second half in what feels like almost a totally different type of idea, especially in showcases where they only where they play those halves and they have, you know, such a tough time making adjustments. They're able to make adjustments on the fly. They're able to do things very quickly. 
I like what Hudson's able to do, especially against really difficult teams, yep. especially in really difficult games. And they're going to have themselves a tough matchup come showcase time. That's exactly right. We are going to have one of their matchups come showcase time at the Winter Showcase Saturday, 4.50 p.m. Eastern. That's 3.50 p.m. Central on Hockey TV. The Dan K Show presents Hudson Havoc taking on the Northern Cyclones. And that will be a fun part of a busy weekend for Hudson Havoc team who starts the weekend, Lucas, with the Charlotte Rush. <laughs> oh. Hey, welcome to a Marlboro. Also, you're playing the Rush. Here's the Charlotte Rush. Here is a team that, um, okay, wait a second. Let's just look back here one more time because if I'm not mistaken, we're about to announce the number one team. And not just at the Elite on Friday do we have a 1v2 matchup in the Dan K Show Power Rankings. But how about in the premiere, Friday afternoon, 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time start, the Hudson Havoc, our number two, take on a team we are about to announce as number one, the Charlotte Rush, the number one team in the Dan K Show Power Rankings. Boys, it's been a while since we've seen you at the top of the mountain, but we had to put you there this month. This Rush team means business. Yeah, Bitness. absolutely. This is a team that is finishing checks through the boards. They're playing offense. They swarm you. I mean, getting to watch the Charlotte Rush team in action in Florida from up in the scout room, they swarm. I, yep. It seemed like they had seven or eight guys on the ice at once, and in those those Ruski red jerseys out there, it's a <laughs> scary, scary sight. Back in the USSR, uh, man, you don't know how lucky you are when you're playing the Rush. And they've got the names and the skill to back it up. They're, they're scoring goals. They're playing great defense. They're, you know, they were one of those teams that, that obviously beat IHC down there. They beat a couple other good squads. It'll be interesting to see what happens as we move through this season because yep. there, there was one thing that both you and I talked about, Charlotte, Dan, up in the scout room, is that it was sometimes it looks like they can be a little lost as a team in the offense. They get a little so, complacent at times. Yeah, it so it'll be and... interesting to see if they can get that momentum, that energy moving forward because as you start to run into that playoff wall, Charlotte is really going to have to force the issue against a lot of these defensively minded teams. The, the Rush are an anaconda, right? When they're just slithering around, they're scary looking. Mm -hmm. But at times you're like, hey, I can get away from this anaconda. But guess what? You fall asleep for a second, you give that anaconda a little bit of a lead there, and you let them get that tail wrapped around you. Ball game, folks. Ball game. They're going to start constricting, they're going to start doing their thing, and you are done. They put the game away. They close wins out. To describe the Charlotte Rush, I'd say win. Win, 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 win. Win, 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 win. That was, that's a great song right there with one word needed for it. But these guys are just winning right now. Charlotte Rush at number one. I, I, a shutout win against IHC. A shutout win against the Eels. A sweep of the Junior Canes. They beat the Florida Blades. The only loss in the month came to Atlanta Mad Hatters. And we watched that game live, Lucas, from mm -hmm. the scout room. Net my understanding on his head. Kind of got tangled up. That game got a little extra physical there. And I think they kind of just lost sight of that W. And you can yeah. see the frustration on the rush bench during that one. I don't hold that one against them too much. I think this is a rush team that we had to put at number one this go around. Yeah, I think if I could use one word to describe the rush, Dan, it would be never ceasing. That is the word to describe the rush right now. And and this is a team that, you know, when they get to when they get to the next couple of games, they're going to have to continue to prove it. Like we said with, uh, you know, with the Elite, when you're at the top, the only way to fall is down. Yeah. They have their destiny in their hands right now, and they're looking to get to nationals and be able to make it out of pool play. They are ready. They are raring to go. Guess what? Game one of the weekend, Hudson Havoc, Charlotte Rush. One of you think you're supposed to be number one? Guess what? Let's see it on the ice. Number two, Hudson Havoc. Number one, Charlotte Rush. Friday afternoon. Let's go, baby. You want to beat a man, you got to beat the man. Let's go through the top ten one more time before we close this thing out. At number one, the Charlotte Rush. At number two, the Hudson Havoc. They'll see each other Friday. Number three, the Metro Jets. Number four, the Hampton Roads Whalers. Welcome back, boys. Number five, the Wisconsin Rapids. River Kings reigning supreme. Number six, the Richmond Generals who are going to have something to say about that. Number seven, the Florida Eels. Number eight, the Islanders Hockey Club. Number nine, the New Jersey Rockets. And a tie for 10th between my soul and Lucas's soul, the Skip Jacks Hockey Club, Utica Junior Comets, tied at number 10. Hey, let's break these ties up. Let's make these moves. It was movement month. Next month is our final, final power rankings before we get the playoff prediction time. One last chance, boys. Let's see. Who's number one? Who's the best team out there? Who's going to win a title? you got two months left to get yourself going before playoff time, and then it's time to raise a cup. Cup or, cup or nothing else, boys. Let's go. Let's get the chase going. 
Lucas, we're going to the empty net. Let's go. Welcome to the empty net. Welcome to the empty net. We've done too much to keep going right now. I think we've got to take a break and a breather, get ourselves ready for the winter showcase. But before that, if you're just tuning in, we remind you, Richmond Generals fans, January 11th, the Dan K Show will be on site for your Holiday Follow Challenge victorious celebration. February 1st, we'll be with the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings out there in the Rapids, baby. Lucas, parting words. I know you got to be excited. You must have a lot on your mind. I second that. Usually I'm pretty verbose at the end of these things, but let's close this thing out. When Dan K's on the mic, it's always hockey night. You don't like those power rankings? Then change them this weekend, folks. Let's go. A cup of coffee was a lot stronger than I was expecting. I haven't eaten today, so again, yeah. like it's just been boys are buzzing right now. I am like yeah. all over the place. It's also very hot in the studio today. You said you feel comfortable. I am. I am hot. <laughs> it's hot. Why are you moving so fast? Why are you talking oh, so fast? Milk was a bad choice. Yeah.